Hi, welcome to what was supposed to be a Facebook Live class, which is now becoming a YouTube video. So, uh, once again, the um, gremlins were with me, and just, I could get sound this month, but I couldn't get a picture that would stay up with the sound. So, I'm going to go ahead and record a video for this. I want you to actually know I recorded what I thought I recorded the video. I painted the whole piece. And then when I went to turn the recording off, the recording wasn't on. So we are going to do it all over again. I should be really good at painting this piece, right? Anyway, um, this piece was our Halloween Addicts Anonymous Christmas edition because we all need to paint a little Christmas every once in a while. And so this Ho 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 Santa, the Santa tag, is what we're going to paint. And I, I can tell you from experience, having just painted it, that it's a quick and easy project. Uh, you will learn a few things, maybe using uh, the rubber stamps for your background or um, the Punchinello to add interest, or it could be dry brushing or, uh, doing his little beard, but um, you will learn something. If anything, it'll be that um, you just love painting Christmas, and that's all there is to it. So, the first thing we need to do is to add some stamping to the background. Now, I started to do this because I wanted to show you that you could use um just your regular uh, acrylic paint to stamp with. I'm going to show you how to do it with a regular rubber stamp and stamp pad. Now I like to use the stays on Timber Brown because I think that black is a little too harsh. So I want to use this uh, script stamp that I got on sale 375 such a deal so I'm gonna just rub some ink on my stamp and I'm gonna come and just add a little bit of text to this it doesn't matter if it gets on my uh, Santa it'll be just fine so I'm just going to pick up some of those stamps that I have in my stash and add. So that was a script. And since this is a Christmas piece, we want to use some snowflakes. Let's get one right here. You can put them wherever you like. And it doesn't have to be an entire snowflake. It can be part of a snowflake down here in the corner. And let's do another part of one up here at the top. I really like this snowflake stamp. I don't know where I got it. I think Stampendous. And I just decided on this guy that I wanted to use um, a stamp that I got that's chicken wire. Because chicken wire is very interesting. So let's add a little bit of chicken wire on here. Just to break up that background a little bit. And I already used my little $2 clearance stamp that says Santa Approved. And I always like to use this little stamp. I think I paid 50 cents for it in a clearance bin. It's just a circle, but it adds just a hint more interest to this background. Okay, so there we go. Easy peasy. Now, if you wanted to do this with um, paint, all you would do is put out, I'm going to get my palette on here. I would put out a little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to take a, a large brush and I'm going to just spread that out into like a rectangle. And then I'll take my stamp. I'm going to try a different one here and just stamp it into that puddle and let's see let's go right here and i'll add oh well going back to my 
piece would have been good. So I'm just going to add some more stamping. And I can just do that with my burnt umber paint. Okay, so you don't have to use a stamp pad. But if you do, I recommend the stays on uh, Timber Brown. Uh, black is just too harsh. You don't want to get all black in it. So I want this to dry since I did just use paint on there. So I'm going to dry those couple of spots a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we are going to float shading around our Santa on the background with our um, oh, where did my big oh that stuff with burnt umber and that's just going to pop Santa up off the background a little bit so side load float a burnt umber and just want to go all the way around Santa I'm using a kind of a large brush it's a three-quarter inch and it's not a real careful float um, I just want to get some brown around here it ages the paper and it pops Santa off the background Okay. So all the way around. And it doesn't matter that I'm getting it on the uh, bait stuff I based in. It'll be okay. Trust me. Of course, I said I was going to have a Facebook Live and that didn't happen. So who knows how far you can trust me. Probably about as far as you can throw me. And that wouldn't be too far. I also want to float this shading around the outside edge. So again, another side load float of burnt umber. And I'm just going to go all the way around the outside edge of this guy. Okay, that goes quick and easy because you don't have to be real uh, precise. And already the piece is looking a little older, a little more interesting. Right? All right. All right, so we want to come back with our... Um, Punchinello, and I am going to uh, stencil some random clusters of dots on the background around my Santa with some Punchinello. And Punchinello is just sequin waste, in case you didn't know. And I use it a lot to add interest to my backgrounds. So I'm just going to add. Some areas of random dots just to break up the background even a little more. Okay, a little light there. Looks good to me. All right, we will come back with this same Punchinello later and add some uh, clusters of white dots but that's more towards the end all right so we are going to work on our santa space now and so you're going to want to get out some warm white and some dried clay and some country red so warm white dried clay and country red. So 
You don't need a whole lot of those. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure I can see where his nose and eyes are. I am going to dry brush some highlighting on his face. And let's get a little closer, right, to his face. I'm going to dry brush some warm white highlighting on his face. And I'll show you how I like to dry brush. When I dry brush, I like to use a Lang Nickel Short Round Sable brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up paint and then I'm going to go to my on my palette and I'm just going to scrub it around, kind of going in circles back and forth, changing direction. And I'm working that paint into the bristles, OK? And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come to my towel back here and I'm going to wipe out the excess paint and then I go to this spot on my hand kind of scrub it around and as I scrub it around when I first hit my hand it's cool and as I scrub it around it loses its coolness and once it loses its coolness that's a pretty good indicator that you've taken enough paint out of your brush that you can go to your piece so I'm going to go down the center of his face in between his eyes. I'm going to go down the sides of his face and on his cheeks. He's going to look pretty horrible for a while. And the other side. And then I'm going to go inside his nose. Okay? So he kind of looks, uh, I don't know, like a ghost or something. All right, then you can go ahead and wash that brush out. We are going to go ahead and dry this really quick. And then we're going to come back and float shading on the face with dried clay. So just your regular side load float. Dried clay. I'm going to go up under his hat brim. And if you like to mop out your floats, this would be a good place to do it. I'm going to go down the sides of his face. Go down the other side. I want to go in the bottom of his nose. So just a nice C stroke float in the bottom of his nose. And then what I want to do is I want to go across his cheeks above the mustache and around the top of his nose. So I'm going to start over here in this corner and go on his cheeks above his mustache. I'm going to go around the top of his nose and down to the other cheek and then across that cheek. All right. And here again, I'm going to go ahead and mop just to soften it a little bit. All right, we want to add a shadow above each eye. And I'm going to do that with a liner brush and a wash of dried clay. So thin down some dried clay. Use your liner brush. Um, I can't really tell what size this is because I wore it off, but I'm going to say... It's a one. So what I'm going to do is find his eyes. I'm going to line a shadow above each eye. So what I want to do is I want to start up on the tip of my liner brush about halfway down on one side of the eye. I'm going to come up, flatten when I get around the top, and back to the point on the other side. 
And yes, my eyes are always different sizes and not on the same level. I do that so if I screw up, it, I can pretend it was planned. So I'm going to start on the tip of the brush on about halfway down, come up around the top, and then down and back up onto the tip on the other side of the eye. Okay, so there we go. Now the country red, we want to corner load and blend it out so we get a nice soft float of country red. And I'm going to add this to the bottom of his nose. I'm going to go right on top of that uh, shading that I just did. I'm just going to give him a little tint of a rosy nose, okay? I also want to put this on his cheeks. So when I get to this little corner here, I like to kind of walk it up and round, make it round that corner a little bit. This side, I'll just start up a little higher. And clean this edge up. Okay, so now he has a rosy nose and rosy cheeks. Let's get in and do a float of warm white in the top of his nose just to make his nose stand out a little bit more. And this way you can kind of clean it up and make it more round or oval or whatever you need to do. And it looks pretty bright there, but it's really not bright. Okay. Awesome. We're doing really well. We want to get out some lamp black and some moody blue. And we're going to paint his eyes in with lamp black. And like I said before, my eyes are never the same size and never on the same plane, it seems. I think this eye is a little bit bigger. Okay. One done. All right. So as long as we have a uh, lamp black in our liner brush, we want to go ahead and give him some eyelashes. And the way you could line them on there, just line a few eyelashes. But what I like to do is load my brush. I don't thin the paint down very much. I set the tip of the brush down inside the black of the eye, right about this top center. And then what I like to do is just shove and squiggle the brush to give him some eyelashes. So set down top center and just push and squiggle to give him some eyelashes. I also like to pretend that he has corners in his eyes, so I always squiggle a little bit in the corners of his eyes. All right, looking good. So let's get those eyes dry. And let's get our Color in our eyes. So that's going to be with Moody Blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a crescent shaped stroke in the bottom of each eye. And I like to um, set this just a hair above the very bottom of the eye. So with Moody Blue and my liner brush, and I don't do a, like a stroke, one stroke, I cheat and draw it on and fill it in. 
I'm going to line the bottom of my stroke and that way I can keep it just a hair above. And then I line the top of my stroke and fill it in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I'm going to line the bottom of that stroke. Then I'm going to come back and line the top and fill it in. All right. So while I still have Moody Blue in my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white just to make a lighter value Moody Blue. I'm going to just line or stroke on a little bit of highlighting in the bottom center of each of those blue strokes. Now wash your brush out. And now we're just going to pick up straight warm white. And what I want to do is I want to just add a highlight stroke to each eye. There's four of them. And then I also just tap a little bit of warm white down the center of that highlight that I did with Moody Blue in there. Now, this is Santa, so he's got to have a few wrinkles or crow's feet. So I'm going to take my liner brush and some thinned dried clay. And I'm just going to give him a few little crow's feet in the corners of his eyes. All right. Cool. So the next thing we'll be working on will be his beard, his hair, and his mustache. Okay, moving right along, we're going to go to work on his beard, his mustache, and his hair. And we're going to do the hair and the beard first. And once we get those to a place that we like, we're going to go ahead and work on the mustache. Because the mustache is on top of the hair and beard. So that's why we want to do that last. Anyway, so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get out some fawn. About a nickel size, quarter size. And you will also want to get out some uh, warm white. And to do the um, beard and hair and mustache, we're going to use a filbert comb brush. This is a, a royal brush, and so it's called a comb. If you have low cornell, it's called a uh, rake. And basically what this is, is like you're using a whole lot of little liners at once instead of just one liner. You could, you could go through and line his beard one little whisker at a time, but that would take forever. And... Um, if you're like me, you don't want it to take forever to do that kind of stuff. And so when you use a rake or comb brush, you want to be sure that you're using liner consistency paint and that you're staying as straight up and down on your brush as you can and on the tips. So I'm going to thin down some fawn. And fawn is kind of like the underwear of his beard. Um... We just want to put in some of this light brown color just to give it some dimension and depth because you know this is like a technically correct beard, right? So I load the brush pretty full and what I like to do is kind of squish it out and like this to spread the bristles out a little bit, okay? And I hear you all saying, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the beard first. And I like to start here in the middle. And now with the filbert comb, you'll be able to get some cur curves and waves. You can even get curls if you wanted to give him curls. So I'm going to start here in the middle. And I'm just going to start pulling this brown, this fawn, onto his beard. And I'm kind of starting to set in some ways. They could all change when I get to the white. But you want to stay as straight up and down and on the tip of your brush. And also, when you come down here to the um, bottom edge, you want to start 
pulling this color past that edge just to start disguising it and getting and breaking it up so you don't have that hard edge once you get done okay so it's really relatively simple if you can remember that you are using technically a liner brush and so you want to treat it like you would your liner brushes by staying up on the tip and straight up and down so remember this is just the underwear it's not going to cover a whole lot but you are going to start disguising that hard edge with this i'm going to go up and do his hair now his hair think like your hairline um your hairline isn't just straight cut off like this so what i want to do is i want to start pulling hair out off of his face off of his his little cheeks his little beard comes off of his cheek there if you look at any person's beard it's not just a straight line like what we have here so you want to start pulling that hair and that beard off onto his face a little bit just to give it a more natural look okay so now that we've gotten that first layer of fawn on, we can go ahead, wash your brush out, and thin down some warm white. And once you get the hang of this brush and the feel for it, this could go relatively quickly. But I also want to let you know it's something that you can go back and forth with. It's not a put on this brown layer, put two layers of warm white on, and then you're done. It's something that you can play with for a while. When you get your beard to a point that it looks good to you, I would leave it for a while. And then if you want to come back later and add more to it, you can. Okay, so first layer of white. And I'm not trying to fill it all up with this layer. I'm going to come back with another layer. But with your uh, with the filbert comb, it's much easier to put in curves and curls than it is if you're using a regular straight comb or rake brush. And you see, I'm I'm coming off this edge, and I'm starting to disguise that hard edge um, pretty well. We're getting a good base on there. So just think like a beard or like long hair. Thin down some more warm white. So this is going to take a couple of coats couple of layers, not coats, because you're not really filling anything up. You're just kind of adding some hair. All right, I'm going to go up to his hair now. Again, start it up his, um, on his face so it looks more natural. I'll just go to this side. Okay, he's looking pretty good already. I'm going to go back and add another layer of warm white to my beard. So you can see it really doesn't have to take forever. And if you decide you want to change um, the direction of some of the curls or the waves, 
you can do that now you can do whatever if you want your beard to be straight you could have done that too i always like to have a little bit of a twist in there didn't block that out very good but it'll be all right Starting to look like Santa now. Okay. Looks pretty good to me. Let's go up and Give his hair a little bit more body. Now, like I said, you can always come back and add more to right i think this area right here could use just a little bit more all right so i'm going to call that good for right now and what i want to do is i want to dry this so that i can come in and do some shading we want to shade um, behind this mustache so my handy dandy heat it gun and dry this beard a little bit and now what I want to do is I want to float some shading like I said um, above and below the mustache and I'm also going to touch a little bit underneath the hat brim and I'm going to do that with a brush mix of burnt umber plus a touch of moody blue. So you're going to get a brownish gray color. Let me find the brush here. Just a regular side load float. All right. So what I want to do is I want to go above the mustache. And what I'll probably do is go all the way back to where that hair starts to come off its cheek. And if, again, if you like to mop your floats, this would be a good spot to do that. And I'm also going to touch just a little bit right in there on under his hat. Now, I didn't go all the way across. I just wanted to touch it where I I would imagine that the hair is coming out from underneath the hat. And then I'm going to go, let's see, let's go on this side. Again, it blended out really well so it's a soft. And then soften it even more with your mop brush. Let's see. And we're going to go underneath the mustache. Just to set it on top of that beard. And now we're going to uh, pull whiskers over that float a little bit. But we still need it underneath there. All right, so we've got a little bit of shading in there. Now we're going to come back again with our filbert comb, and we want to uh, 
stroke some fawn, then fawn on here again, same um, succession of color. So I'm going to go fawn first. And again, you want to kind of pull over that line of the shading so you kind of wash out that hard edge. I need to thin my paint a little bit more. You also want to come up above the hard edge on the on the cheek here. Okay, now normally you only pull hair the way it grows, but because this has a little pointy curl and you can come in and pull it the opposite way the way it grows, just so you can get that point in that curl. Let's do this other side of the mustache. Again, I'm going to get that little curl in the end. I have the window open so you can hear things kind of blowing. All right, so we have that first layer on our mustache. And because the mustache is a smaller area than what we covered with the beard and the hair, we want to dry this so that we don't just get mush when we go to add our warm white on top of it. All right, so now let's thin down some warm white again. Still using our filbert comb. And we are going to start stroking on our mustache. Now I tend to like to make my mustache a little uh, straighter and true to the shape. I don't know if that makes any sense. So it's not going to have a lot of curls in it. But it's your Santa and your mustache. So you just do what you want. I also tend to make my mustache just a little bit more uh, solid, um, wider, because it is sitting on top. And that just helps to, to make it look like it's on top. Okay, now again, I want to dry this because I want to put another layer on there, but I don't want to get much. All right, so another layer of whiskers on that mustache, and I think we'll be good to go. Okay, he's looking pretty good. Oh, 
Okay. I'm going to call that mustache basically done. Well, except for just a touch of shading that we need to do. So let's get in here and dry this again. And you can see there's little hints of that brown in the background. So um, it just adds some more depth to its beard than its mustache. All right, so the same mix, burnt umber plus a touch of moody blue. And we're going to float some shading on the mustache under the nose just to kind of anchor that under his nose otherwise it's just kind of floating there not attached to anything and then I also want to float a little bit of this color down the center a little bit to separate the two sides of the mustache from each other. Doesn't take a lot. Okay, easy peasy. That wasn't bad, was it? Well, lucky for you, you can um, back this up and rewind it or stop it. Just to um, get some more, to watch it again and get some more pointers and refreshers. So now we're going to work on this hat. And so I, what I want to do is I want to get out some melon. And I'm going to dry brush some highlighting on this hat with melon. And don't wash your brush out once you get that done because we're going to go up lighter dry brush brighter highlighting so just pretty wide at the brim and just take it up following the shape of the hat around that little curve I'm having to scrub to get a lot of that paint out, which is a good thing, right? Comes off too easy, you get blotches, which I get most of the time. All right, so now I have my first uh, highlight on there. On my dirty brush, I'm just going to pick up some warm white to get a lighter value of melon. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit brighter highlight. And that's not going to go quite as wide as the melon dry brush did. Okay, cool. We're going to float shading basically on all the edges of the red part of the hat with black plum side load float of black plum gonna come down both sides of the hat I'm gonna go right up next to this pom pom too and kind of walk this color out a little bit. Here again, I'm going to just kind of soften it. Let's go on our the other side of our hat. Too much stuff in front here. Cool. And then I want to go on the hat above the hat brim.
in these corners. I want to darken that a little bit, so I'm going to walk the color out to round that corner a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just to deepen that. I feel like I don't have enough on this side. So I'm going to come and float a little bit again. All right, that's better. All right, cool. Now the hat has some little white stripes. So you just want to take your liner brush and thin warm white and add the stripes. And pay attention, they're not straight. They're, they follow the shape of the hat. So, you don't want to make them just straight lines. That would be not interesting at all. Okay, that works for me. Now, I did want to uh, deepen the shading like right here in this little hook and probably in these corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry those stripes. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to dry brush some black plum just to deepen that shading in this little hook area. And I also want to do it in these corners a little bit. Just to darken it up, give it a little more depth. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do our fur trim. So you're going to want to get out a brush that you like to stipple with. And the fur trim is based in fawn. So I want to pick up fawn on my stipple brush. Then I want to pick up some warm white just so I get a little bit lighter value of fawn. And I'm just going to stipple this lighter color. See, it's not real white. It's got a booger in it, though. And I'm going outside what I based just to make it fluffy. So basically, it goes pretty much all over. There. And I'm going to work on the hat brim. So I'm going to go outside the edge again. To make it fluffy. I probably have a little more paint in than what you normally stipple with. So I'm going to just wipe this brush out, pick up some fawn, and then pick up some burnt umber. And I want to stipple in some darker fur around the bottom. Not dark, dark fur, just darker. And this is another one of those things where you can just play with it back and forth until you get a look you like. Sometimes I get lucky and it 
turned out really good the first time, and other times I kind of have to play with it. All right, so now I'm just going to wipe the brush out, and I'm going to go straight into my warm white. It's still going to have a little bit of the brown in it, but it's mostly warm white, and I'm just going to do some brighter um, fur. Forgot what I was painting there for a minute. Just brighten up that top layer of fur. And I, yes, I am getting down into the shaded part, but not real heavy. Okay, I'm going to call that done. So Santa needs some eyebrows. So let's get our liner brush and straight warm white. Don't water it down. And we're just going to tap his little eyebrows on. And yes, they're going right over that hat brim a little bit. I didn't want them hidden under the hat. So just tap on some little eyebrows. All right, that makes them look cute. So let's let this dry. Let's put the pattern on for our lettering and I am so sorry I didn't put the pattern for the holly and the berries on the actual pattern. But um, if you want, if you have a stencil of a holly leaf, um, that would work great. Holly leaves are relatively simple. So just kind of take a pencil and sketch a little holly leaf on there and uh, and we'll get to painting on those. All right, so I have the pattern on. I sketched on a holly leaf and some berries and I put the pattern on for the lettering. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and paint in my holly leaf with um, with Irish moss, sorry. I was trying to do too many things at one time. And let's see, here's the brush. Got brushes all over the place. I'm just going to paint in my holly leaf. It's not going to have to be opaque, but it probably is going to take two coats. So just a quick holly leaf. Oops, I guess I could be over here on camera. Huh? That might make it easier. So that's Irish moss. We want to get out some country red and we can paint in our holly berries with country red. can make these as big as you want or as little as you want. Um, I suggest painting them in because they'll dry faster than if you dot them. And we all know what happens when we dot stuff. It We almost always drag our hands to it. So just three holly berries. And then also we want to get out some evergreen. And we'll go ahead and do our first color on our lettering while we let our berries and our holly leaf dry. So I like to do the lettering with a liner brush. I think this is a one. And what I do is I load it with um, straight paint. I don't water it down. And I also like to kind of flatten it out a little bit so it has a square tip. That just makes it easier. So I'm going to just put these letters on. 
with evergreen. Just take your time. And when it's done, okay, let's get our second hoe done. We have lots of stuff that goes on top of this lettering, so one coat is enough. And finally, our last one. Oops, too much paint. Let's see. Awesome. Getting close to done, ladies, gentlemen. Okay. Awesome. Now we can go back and give our uh, holly leaf another coat of Irish moss. And that'll do it, even if it's not opaque. We have a lot of stuff on top of it, so it doesn't really need to be solid. All right. We still have melon on our palette. So let's go ahead and float a highlight on each of our berries with a float of melon. goes on bright it'll calm down a little bit try to keep your hand out of your letters all right cool now let's go back to our letters and what we're going to do is we are going to use the same brush that we lined the letters with and we're going to pick up some um, irish moss and we're going to line a highlight in the top, probably two thirds of each letter. So basically Irish moss, it doesn't have to cover what you painted completely. Just add a stroke of Irish moss. It covers about two thirds of the letter. That really pops and brightens that lettering up. Let's get down here, do our other pose. And you'd think that would be enough, but it's not. All right, let's go back to our holly leaf. You're going to need some margarita. Just a little bit. We're going to float a highlight on that holly leaf with margarita. So across the top. Got some green on there. Got some evergreen on there. That wouldn't have been a good thing. So across the top of the holly leaf. 
And then I'm also going to go right underneath the center vein line. I highlight that. Now our berries, we want to float shading with black plum in the bottom of each berry. All right, we're getting there. Let's go back to our lettering. We're going to line another highlight in the top of each letter, this time with margarita. And it only goes about a quarter of the way down, a third of the way down. So just that bright margarita, just in the very top. takes no time at all, but adds so much. All right. So let's go back to our holly leaf. We're going to float some shading with evergreen on the bottom of the holly leaf. Okay, should have let my center vein line dry. I kind of wiped it out. It'll be all right. Okay, now there are some other smaller vein lines that come off of this center vein line, and we're going to add those with thinned evergreen. So a liner brush and thinned evergreen. You want to just line that center vein line. And then you're just going to add some little veins coming off the center. We want to take our liner brush and some warm white, not watered down. And we're just going to add a little highlight of warm white to each little berry. We want to shade on the hat next to the holly leaf with some black plum just to set that holly leaf on top of the hat. So I'll get up there on the camera. So it's not a big shade, just a little float. And then underneath on the um, hat brim, we want to float some very well blended out burnt umber. So a nice soft float of burnt umber just to separate and put that holly leaf on top, actually, and the berries on top of our hat brim. So go around the berries and the holly leaf with a soft float of burnt umber. All right, so now we're going to go back to our lettering. And this is something I do to my all my lettering, basically. It's very rare that I don't. Is I'm going to line a shadow on the background to the top and left of each letter with a wash of burnt umber. So I just thin down burnt umber, same liner brush that I painted the lettering with, just going to drag it across the top and then come down the left side. So wherever there's a left side or a top, you want to add this wash of burnt umber just to help that um, lettering come off the background a little bit. And that goes right over 
uh, whatever's behind it, the hat brim, if it's the hat brim or the hat or whatever, you can just stay with the burnt umber. So all of the lettering just gets this shadow. Line next to it. And I think you can see the difference that that makes helping the lettering to pop off that background a little bit more. We have just a couple more things to do and then we can call this complete. All right. Slowly but surely, I'll get this shadow on there. I might even do it where you can see, too. All right. Cool. Now, um, I also want to... Um, come back with my punchinello and add if I can find it there it is hit it so I'm going to add some random clusters of white dots on my background here and there just to add a little bit more interest to the background and just to lighten it up so stencil brush and your punchinello and just kind of add some areas that have white dots doesn't have to be too many and they can be right on top of brown dots um, just wherever you want to pop up the color a little bit all right I think that's gonna do it for that now, I also felt like the background needed just a little bit more. So what I did is I added some tints of color to the background. And I think you can probably see it here um, in different little places. So what I did is I took colors that I used off my palette. Um, I used Moody Blue, Country Red, and Irish Moss. And so I'm going to thin down some Country Red. Make a nice light wash. And I'm just going to add just a tint. It doesn't take much color. But I just want to add a little tint here and there. Just to bring some of the color that we used on Santa into the background too. And let's see, let's go up here on this one. So that's country red. I'm going to go with Irish moss. So again, I'm going to thin down some Irish moss. And let's add that down here. I'm going to do about three places with each color. And I just think it, it just kind of uh, makes it look more festive. I don't know. And then I'm going to also add a little bit of moody blue. You really want to thin down the moody blue. And let's pick a couple places. Maybe over here. There's not as much blue as um, there is the other colors. I don't think, but now as I'm adding more blue. And let's add a little bit up here. There. All right, so I think that just really added a nice um, 
much to that background. So then what we want to do is we want to spatter. Um, good old spattering. And that's with just thin warm white. And however you like to spatter works for me. I like to do uh, thin down some warm white paint. I'm going to do this with warm white. And I load a large flat brush, kind of blot it out a little bit, and then I beat it on the, beat the ferrule, uh, not the ferrule, the handles together. Now if I had more paint in my brush, I would get bigger blobs. And I like the soft spatters. So just all over. If you get it on Santa, which you're going to, you can just kind of lick your finger and scrub it off his eyes and his face a little bit. All right. One last thing to do. And that's to add the ragged border that goes around. And that's just done with a flat brush with a side load of burnt umber. And I like to use an older flat brush. And that would be a real trick if I could find it. There we go. Got it. And no water. And I'm just going to um, side load some straight burnt umber on that brush. And then let's see, let's get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to take the side that's corner loaded and just kind of run it along the edge and wiggle it back and forth so I get a nice kind of uneven rough border on here. Okay. And you don't have to do this. You can add stripe. You can not do anything. It's up to you. But I just kind of like to finish the piece off with this extra little ragged border. All right, so just continue this all the way around. I'm going to need a little bit more burnt umber. My puddle went a little dry. Okay. You can make it as wide as you want, as skinny as you want, as wiggly as you want. Just like with dots and everything, the fresher the paint, the better it, it is, the better it goes on. Alrighty. So I just want to tell you I appreciate your patience with me. And I appreciate you painting with me. And I hope that you'll join me again next month when I post the video for Werewolf Spit, which is our next Halloween Addicts Anonymous class. All right. So there you go. We've got our Christmas fix. In Halloween Addicts Anonymous. We'll do Christmas again in a couple of months. I appreciate you being here and painting with me and have a great month, great year, have a great summer. See you again next time.